Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to unbox this K10 Pro Scanner from King Bolin. They sent this to me for testing, so I wanted to share the, the process with you guys. Everyone sees me using the scan tools, you don't always get to see them being set up. Uh, most of them are pretty straightforward, simple registration process, connect to your Wi-Fi, update the scan tool, and then you plug it in and go. But you know, this one may be different than some of the tools we've done in the past, so I figured I would let you guys follow along with me. And then we got a couple vehicles behind us, we can plug it in and test it out. So we'll slice some tape here. I've been missing my pocket screwdrivers all day. I think they're still packed away from going to Vision, and I haven't found out where I left them. I'm hoping they're in my backpack because I've been grabbing for them all day and haven't been able to find them. So it looks like we have a carrying case. So, you know, it's a hard rugged case. Um, if you guys don't use your tools a lot, keep them in the garage. If you don't have a toolbox to keep them in then at least it comes with a carrying case. I don't always use my carrying cases because it's more time consuming for me to get the tool out of the case every time I use it. And I'm really hoping that it comes with at least a parcel charge so we don't have to wait for uh, any charging to happen before we can use it. So it does look like it has a rubberized case around it. I'm sure that it's Android based, but uh, we'll find out. It has a kickstand. I'm not sure if I 100% like it. It's fairly rigid. I like when I can hang a scan tool on the steering wheel, and I suppose that it might stay in that position. So maybe that'll work out. And then you can lay it down flat if you're working on a bench. So at first thought, I didn't think it was going to be very good, but it might be all right. It kind of looks like we have a spot for the interface to clip into the back here. I'm not sure if it does or not. Oh, it's magnetic. So don't lose that. Um, that's probably uh, not easy to replace. So we'll set that off to the side for now. I'll bring you guys around to the front. I already smudged up the screen, so I'll, we'll, we'll clean that off. We'll go through the power on and setup process. And then we may have to pair it to this interface. I'm not sure. It may come paired from the factory. I'm sure there's instructions. Let's see what else is in the box here. So we have some documentation and it says password letter, probably for registration. A box full of accessories and adapters. So we have our different outlet adapters. We need the USA version. The other ones I'll probably chuck in the trash can. There we go. Uh, this one has a RJ45 Ethernet port on it. This is probably for some of the newer vehicles that are um, diagnostics over internet, uh, DOIP. That would be my guess. We have a USB to RJ45. This is probably an Ethernet adapter for the Android unit. So the vehicles that are diagnostic over IP, we probably have to connect right here, short ethernet cord from the USB port on top of this. I'm just speculating at this point. Some of the newer vehicles that use that protocol are European stuff like Volvo, BMW, maybe Jaguar. I'm not sure if stuff in America is using it yet, and if they are, they're probably still doing their diagnostics over the OBD2 port and they just have that protocol built into their factory VCI. We have a USB-A to USB-C cord here, and we do have a short extender for the, uh, the VCI. 
Sometimes you don't want this thing plugged right in or it's in the way you're gonna kick it. Um, it makes more sense to you know, plug it into an extender. That way you can get this interface out of the way of the pedal operation. So it's kind of nice that they include that. I also have another one of these with a like a 90 degree adapter on the end, which is kind of nice in some circumstances. Boot up process seems a little slow, but it may have been going through the setup process here. So we're gonna pick English next. Connect to our Wi-Fi, our time zone. So it looks like I may need to register for an account. So for the registration process, you're gonna to have to put a username and password in in order for everything to be functional. Uh, we could probably skip past the register screen, but you may not be able to update the tool. You may not be able to do any online features like uh, automatic VIN decoding. I'm not really sure. I've just always activated my tools and then, uh, then updated them before use. So we'll uh, pick a username, password, confirm our password, email, and uh, verification code. Okay, now I get this message. It says our account did not receive the connector. Please choose offline or activate the connector. I'm guessing that's this unit here. So let's go ahead and hit activate VCI. We may have to plug this into a vehicle. I'm not sure. Uh, nope, we just need serial number and activation code. And that is information that is in our instruction manual. So right here is our serial number and activation. So it automatically took us to the update screen where it says upgradable software. So we have, uh, we have a lot of updates to do. Down here at the bottom, we are selected on all. We can unselect all, but let's just hit upgrade. So it's gonna go through, download, and install these automatically. Um, there's no one here else here at the shop today, so my internet should be pretty quick. And if this is anything like many of my other scan tools, I'll have to go through here and update it several times on this initial update because there's so many packages that are being updated at the same time. So even though it switched screens, these were still updating in the background. So this will go on for a little bit. It says we have 116 pieces of software to go. Uh, there's 120 pieces that are already updated. So about half of the library is out of date at this point, and I'm sure that that number was larger when we started. So we'll let this run for a little bit and we'll come back. Okay, that took about 20 minutes to update the entire software package. Let's go to our home button here. And I'm just gonna click on update one more time. So it refreshes, make sure we're not missing anything. But I think we're gonna be okay. No updates, okay, we are good to go. So the next thing we need to do is go plug into a vehicle and see if we can diagnose it. We do have a demonstration vehicle, but I prefer just to uh, you know, plug right in. So let's jump over to this Mitsubishi behind me. And actually I'll just go plug in the dongle into the dash and Okay. Now, some vehicle brands, when you first go into this, you have to pick what region you're in. I know Toyota is that way. If you try diagnosing it with the base package, it's not going to work. So you have to go in and pick North America. So we have a couple of vehicle classes here. I don't know what each one actually means or where to look it up on the vehicle. I don't see Mitsubishi's very often, but even the OEM scan tool makes you pick these manually. And by doing that process earlier, I know that we have this one here. And I think that just kind of gives it like what its base package is, but I'm not 100% sure. So we have a couple of options here, smart scan, system scan, or choose to scan. So we could you know, put check boxes by stuff and choose which ones we want to scan. We can do a system scan or smart. I'm not super familiar with this, but I know that one of these will just scan the vehicle to see what modules are available. But I would rather 
do the codes as well. So I'm just gonna press smart list, see if that populates what we need. This vehicle came in with a bunch of codes for low voltage. It had been sitting for a while. Uh, we scanned them earlier and cleared the codes. So we shouldn't have any codes in here, but we'll find out. There were some communication codes in history when we scanned it. So we may, uh, we may get some communication codes in here. Oh, do we have more down here? Yep. So we do have a TPMS and a code in the immobilizer. And those codes may have been in there. They might be for the key or something. Um, it had some TPMS codes as well for the tire sensors. So this topology screen isn't really a network topology. It's a system topology. So up here at the top, we have the powertrain, body, safety systems, ADAS systems, other immobilizer and chassis. So it looks like we're done scanning. We can go to report. It's gonna show us uh, all the codes we had. If we entered in all of our shop information, it'd be a nice printable or emailable format. So we have a bunch of systems that are green, a couple that are red, and here are our trouble codes. So these are all the system statuses. And then down here is the trouble codes we have. So we have a B1A11 for a keyless key battery low. And that's in both modules. So it probably uses the TPMS antenna for our immobilizer system. So we can save that or share it. We're just going to go back. Now there is a button here for diagnostic plan. Um, I don't know if that is gonna give us information about those codes. We're gonna find out, we're gonna click on it. We'll click on that code. Oh, I don't see anything in there. That is probably more for the engine or powertrain codes. Let's go into our engine here. Mitsubishi calls it a MPI. So we can get some information, read our fault codes, read our data stream, clear our fault codes, freeze frame, actuation test, special functions, coatings, and readiness. Let me see what's in coding. So we have VIN number, on vehicle coding, manual coding. We have coding information. So we can copy coding out of this if we were replacing the ECU, that's kind of nice. Um, I don't work on many Mitsubishi, so I'm not sure what all of those do. Go to special functions. So we can reset the learned values. We got EVAP testing in here. So basically, just because I used the factory scan tool earlier, I saw every single one of these functions in that factory scan tool. So this isn't missing anything that was in the factory scan tool. Now, I don't know what all these do, and I'm not going to push buttons and you know break a customer car. So I can't you know, tell 100% if all these functions work. Since they appear to be identical to the OEM scan tool, they probably function as intended. Go to data stream, see how many data pads are in this vehicle. So at the bottom it says we have zero out of 85 selected. So under the engine management on this vehicle, we have 85 available data pads in the enhanced data section. Now we could also scan this vehicle under generic OBD2 and get a whole bunch of different data pits. I'm just gonna select everything and hit okay. So it looks like we have all of our data pits. They are showing what appears to be accurate data. Now, a lot of this is in metric. Looks like I can pick, you know, depending on what I'm looking at, I can pick what I want. So those are all metric units. Let me switch this to the Imperial. And we have PSI and all the, uh, the other options that I'm used to seeing. RPM, voltage, PSI. Looks like we can do some graphing. Let me 
let's see if there's an option to record. There is, down here at the bottom. So it shows kind of like a microphone recording. I'm not sure if it records audio as well. Um, I haven't seen that on my other tools. But it saved it for me. Now that's a feature I haven't seen before. We can save a sample. So we are at zero RPM. So I can record that sample. Let's save it. And then there was an option to compare sample. So over here in the standard range, shows me what my range was during that sample recording. So if I had a you know, brand new known good vehicle, I could put it on here and get known good ranges and then uh, as vehicles come in that are broken, I could pull a sample. Or if I have an intermittent issue, you can record it when it's not acting up and then record it again when it is acting up. So that's kind of cool. I think that about sums it up for uh, what we can do here. Um, I will play around with this over the next couple of weeks, find out what I like, what I don't like, and you guys might get a chance to see this in future diagnostic videos. So I think that wraps it up for this video. We unboxed it, has a carrying case, we powered it up, registered it, updated it, took about 20 minutes because there was uh, so many updates in there, and then plugged it into this Mitsubishi, did a system scan, looked in the engine data, we saw the same uh, functional test in here that the factory scan tool had, which is kind of neat. I need to check out that save sample and compare sample function. That seems like it could be useful. Now, when I went into setup, I did see an option in there for uh, FCA or Chrysler. So we may be able to set this up with auto auth. I have to check on that to unlock secure gateway on the 2018 or newer Chryslers that have a secure gateway. What else? I need to check on the updates. I don't know if this comes with uh, free updates for a certain amount of time. I would imagine at least a year. Some of them come with two years. And then there's some out there that are unlimited. So um, I'm not sure what this tool comes with. But if I find out, I'll, I'll pin a comment down below. If you guys have any questions or comments on this tool, um, put those down below. I'll answer as quick as I can. If it's something that would make a good video and I have the opportunity, a vehicle here that would match that situation, I'll plug into that and uh, give it a shot. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this. Subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.